tonight is overcoming weakness with, with strength. Canadian speed skater Denny Morrison uh, won his first Olympic medal in 2006 and continued winning medals right through 2014 Winter Olympics. After that, his eyes were firmly set on the 2018 Games in South Korea, but in May 2015, Morrison was in a horrific motorcycle accident. He barely survived multiple serious injuries, including one that left him with a titanium rod in his leg. But as soon as possible, he began the arduous process of rehabilitation and training, still determined to qualify for the 2018 Olympics. The next year, after he and his girlfriend Josie Spence completed a three a week bike trip, Spence noticed some sp suspicious behavior in Morrison. Slurred speech, a droopy face, left side weakness, his left flip-flop kept falling off. Spence knew the signs. She, she rushed Morrison to the hospital. He was diagnosed with a stroke. Again, Morrison recovered, dove back into training, now struggling with the mental after effects of the stroke, including depression. Remarkably, in 2017, Spence, also a Canadian speed skater, both uh, qualified to represent Canada in the 2018 Winter Olympics. Training for that level of competition pushes athletes to their limits, but Morrison's teammates repeatedly said, he was their inspiration to keep going no matter what. His coach called him the most resilient person he'd had. And although Morrison didn't medal in 2018, his journey to get there was a victory in and of itself. Describing his grit and determination, Morrison said it's human nature um, to encounter adversity. And when you do, there's a choice you have to make. Are you going to fight? Are you going to overcome and work toward your goals? Or are you going to give up and fail? When things stand in the way between you and what you want to achieve, it's a grit factor that gets you where you want to go. Goals don't come easy for anyone. But I think if you make a gritty attempt to push forward, you'll surprise yourself and everyone else with how far you can go. Well, that's a, a great story, right? It's not a very Bible-oriented story. It's a story that says, hey, the human heart, we can go and we can get it done. And you know what? That, that starts Denny Morrison learned strength comes in many forms. So does weakness. There's marital and moral weakness. There's financial and physical weakness, parental job-related weakness. But the most debilitating weakness is the weakness of your spiritual life in your walk with God. See, here's the thing. We can overcome quite a few things if we just have character and good determination. But when it comes to our spiritual walk, when we have spiritual weakness, we can't just willpower our way out of it. We need to overcome a Bible way. Suffering challenges and hardships is universal. At some point, we all face something. The cause can be external, maybe an injury, or a loss, or a mistreatment by others. It can be internal, such as self-doubt or poor choices, inflated pride or addiction. But in our core passage in Ephesians 6, we're told to face all these realities of an oppositional world with the strength we receive from our spiritual life. I want you to look at our, our verse again. Finally, my brethren, 
Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. I want you to notice here, and I don't want you to miss this. This is not just a rallying cry. Buck up, you can do it. You know what? There are folks that can do that, and, and there are folks in, in, that are successful in business, successful in sports. They're just, they're, they got grit. Oh, man, I'm going to do it. I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to. But eventually, the Lord's going to bring us to a point where it's going to be beyond the I'm going to get it done. Why? Because he wants us to get to the point where we're saying, I can't! And God says, now I can. Be strong in the Lord. That matters. That's not just a, a flowery way that Christians talk. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. It's interesting that how God talked to um, Joshua be strong and of a good courage for unto this people shall thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them only be thou strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do all according to the law which Moses my servant commanded thee turn not from the uh, Turn not from it to the right hand nor to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. Going back again, verse 9 of the same chapter. Have not I commanded thee? Be strong and of a good courage. Boy, do you think that God is trying to grab um, Joshua kind of by the lapels and say, Listen, I got something for you to do. Be ready. I'm going to give you strength. You need to be strong. David said to Solomon, his son, Be strong and of good courage, and do it. Fear not, nor be dismayed, for the Lord God, even my God, will be with thee. So again, what am I being strong for? I'm being strong in the power of his might. Why? God's going to be with you. Now, in the New Testament, Paul said to young preacher boy Timothy, the same type of thing. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Now this is cool too. Be strong in what's grace? Unmerited favor. <coughs> Listen. God wants to give you stuff. He wants to give you power. He has made you partakers of the divine nature because you are somebody and been such a good person. No, you're a wretch. But God loves you anyway. And God is greater than your weakness. And here's a cool thing, too. He's greater than your strength, too. When you read Paul's motivational words to the Ephesians, you might logically assume that the command is to be strong in order to fight. I mean, we're familiar with Ephesians 6, right? We're going to put on the what? Whole armor. Generally, if you're putting on an armor, you're fixing to fight. Do you know that that's not the command here. I, uh, I put up on, on my Facebook page, I, I don't know this guy from Adam, so if you saw um, me put this up and said, Preacher, how could you put up such a, a terrible preacher, bad guy on your Facebook page? Listen, I put up this one thing because I thought it was cool, and I'm, I'm going to tell you what I saw. Uh, there's a guy preaching. He's 
pretty apparent he's uh, not necessarily of our stripe, but he's preaching. And I guess he was, um, his name was Sam, and he was um, interviewing before a big church to maybe take it on as a pastor. And he was in front of the board. And they said, Brother Sam, I have a question for you. Said, okay. He said, and this is the board talking, we here at our church, we lean left. Where do you lean? And if you haven't seen it, you, you should stop by because it's, it's, it's good preaching. I'm not going to do the whole thing that he did. But you could see, and I, I could just think, when, when, when he was saying that, I, I thought, Lord, thank you that you've never put me in a situation where I would have to answer that question diplomatically. And you could tell, he's like, and he said, the Lord told me to say one thing. And I said, Lord, I don't want to say it. And God said, say it. So he said, sirs, with due deference, I don't lean. I stand. And then, of course, like any good preacher would do, he caught loose uh, on talking about all the things that he stood for. I'm telling you, good preacher, man. <laughs> but in Ephesians 6, the call is not to fight, it's to stand. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. Having done all to stand. Stand. Therefore. Wow. You think Paul's trying to say something here. Why stand and not fight? I'll tell you why. Because Jesus already fought. Battle's already been won. We're more than conquerors through him that loved us. Thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. That's a done deal. Now thanks be, to God, uh, be unto God, which always causeth us to triumph in Christ, and maketh us manifest the savor of his knowledge by us in every place. So from the spiritual perspective, we're not, fight, we're not fighting for victory. We're fighting from a position of victory. As we look back then, we rest in Christ's victory. Satan, victory over sin, over Satan, over death. As we look forward, we face the future knowing that God will always lead us to victory. That's what it means to be an overcomer. Well, going back to our uh, verse, finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Stand. Stand strong. As you know, I, I, I am um, leaning on uh, the work from Dr. David Jeremiah um, on the book Overcomer. And uh, by the way, if you want a free copy of that book, show up on Tuesday night, watch on, uh, on TV or on Facebook, and call in with a question, and I'll send you a free book. Anyway. I, my respect, I, I've always loved Dr. Der Jeremiah and his dad. I grew up listening to his dad. But you know what? I even 
found a stronger thing for him when he offers this illustration. He talks about a stand made by Gandalf the Grey. In Fellowship of the Rings, against a fire-breathing thing called Belrog. And he meets Belrog, and Belrog wanted to go forward. And he stood, and with a sword in one hand and a staff in the other, you shall not pass. I'll tell you what, I still think about that. Bumps. That is what we mean to make a stand. Well, we can look at that and say, well, that was easy for him. That's who Gandalf was. But our journey is different. We don't always have a clear purpose or destination. I mean, it was obvious Belrog was the bad guy. He was he was the monster breathing fire, yeah. and uh, fire in his tail, fire everywhere. But you think, well, Gandalf, he, he was this wizard with all the great power. Of course, he could do something like that. We don't live in Middle Earth, and we don't have that superpower, or do we? See, maybe we are kind of in Middle Earth, midway between creation and recreation. We face the great challenges. The evil one flings fiery darts at us daily to knock us off balance. He does everything in his tremendous power to prevent us from achieving our, uh, our purpose in God. Each day, you must ask yourself to lean on the strength of God and say, am I going to overcome and work toward my goals, or am I going to fail? Every morning, your brain pulls itself from sleep into the waking world. You say, how will I start the day? Will I depend on God? Will I stand, or will I yield? So then, okay, all right, I get it. I'm supposed to stand. I don't want to stand. I'm tired of standing. Stumble a lot. Bell rug's scary anyway. How do I do it? I know what I'm supposed to do. How do I do it? How do I find the source of strength that I need? Well, we could go back to our beginning, you know, and, and, and think of that fellow who was going to the Olympics and he had all these bad things happen, but he's going to go through and do it anyway. Well, there's something to that. But that's not where the guarantee is. Because there's a limit in our strength. Here's where the strength is. The strength is found in God. Oh, God, thou art terrible out of thy holy places. The God of Israel is he that giveth strength and power unto his pe people. Blessed be God. Isaiah, trust ye the Lord. Uh, trust ye in the Lord forever. For in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. Here, get this now. So I can't think, oh, I'm going to have Gandalf-like strength. But I can say I have God-like strength because I've been already made partakers of the divine nature, and the Bible says I have everything I need for life and godliness. Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. Well, I guess God's not lacking any power. He giveth power to the faint. That's good, because I'm faint, and I need his power. And to them that have no might, he increaseth strength. Fear not, for I am with thee. 
Be not dismayed. I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. All right, so I get it. I'm weak. God is strong. I need God's strength. But how do I make that leap? How do I go from, I, I, I mean, in my mind, I can understand the situation. I am weak. I need you. Oh, God, help me. <coughs> and God is all-powerful. How do we bridge that gap? Think of it this way. This is uh, more Dr. Jeremiah's explanation. I think it's great. Your computer's hard drive contains all the ap applications you use for word processing, accounting, graphics, and more. When you launch one of these programs, the content of that application is downloaded from the hard drive into a con temporary memory where your computer's operating system finds it and delivers it to your screen. Until that program is called on, though, it just sits there on your hard drive unused. In other words, the program is just data waiting to solve a problem. You have to call on that data to use it. So think about this. God's word is filled with great and precious promises. All that we need for life and godliness, as we've been talking about uh, on Sunday morning, all the strength we need for the challenges found in the Bible, but the Bible sitting on your shelf, it's just like having a program on your hard drive and never opening the program. It's there. It's everything you need, but you got to open it up. So when the Bible goes back and says, hey, we go back to our text verse, be strong in the Lord, in the power of his might, If you're a born-again believer, you already have access to it. Now, use it. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Now, we download God's strength. Oh. I just scrambled my notes. There we go. Okay. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I I do love doing this on on here, but then if you bump something wrong, it all goes away. <laughs> All right. First thing we do, we download strength from God's word. My soul melteth for heaviness. Strengthen thou me according to thy word. How do we open up our, our, our eye, minds to this? We do it by reading the word. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is, is sure, making wise the simple the statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. So read the book. Get your faith in the Bible. Get to that strength. The Word of God will help you download the strength of God. Now, you also download God's strength in worship. Be thou exalted, Lord, in thine own strength. So will we sing and praise thy power. Listen, when we come to church, whether it be Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, we open up the hymn book, we get ready to start. That's not just a warm-up or something, uh, just a tradition that we do. It's a part of a worship as we're starting our, our singing. We do our, 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 uh, our testimony. 
we do our, our prayer, we're focusing attention back on God. And when we're doing that, and you, but if you do that the way God tells us to do it, in spirit and in truth, and you connect, and you uh, passionately let it go between you and God, you download strength to be able to stand. Listen. <laughs> this world's a mess. We have a lot of messy things happening all the time. Sometimes we get surprised by messy things. Amen? Make sure you're downloading strength by being in the Word, being present in worship. Under thee, O oh my strength, will I sing, for God is my defense, the God of my mercy. Habakkuk is a book that opens with the prophet agonizing over God's seeming inattention to his prayers. Habakkuk was watching his nation Israel fall into sin and rebellion. He couldn't understand why God was doing what he was doing. He was planning to use the Chaldeans as a rod of judgment against the people of Israel. And the Chaldeans were wicked. The prophet Habakkuk was overwhelmed. Why would God do such a thing? It went against everything he knew about God. But if you read this short book, you'll feel this agonizing pain. And you realize that this book was a prayer. And it was um, finished off by, to the chief musicians, with my stringed instruments. These were the whole book of Habakkuk was a song. And one of the most profound worship songs in the entire Bible include these haunting lines, although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vines, the labor of the olive shall fail, the fields shall yield no meat, the flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no herd in the stalls. Yet, look at this, man, this is the submission, yet will I rejoice in the Lord, and I will joy in the God of my salvation. Wow. Habakkuk was downloading strength in his absolute open from the heart submission and worship. I don't know what you're doing, but I will praise you because you are God. We download strength by waiting. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. You'll find strength in that heart. Wait, I'd say, on the Lord. Even the youth shall faint and be weary. The young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. Mount up with wings of eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Listen, what does that mean? When you wait, you slow down. When you wait, you get quiet. When you wait, you pray. These are ways we can download the strength of God and apply it to us. So this simple little verse in Ephesians 6. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. This shows us how big we can be an overcomer. We can overcome our weakness with his strength. Thank you, Lord, for the truth of your word. Thank you for bringing us here tonight. And God, I pray that you would um, bless all that we do. Help us, God, to, um, to 
depend on your strength. Thank you, God, in Jesus' name. Amen.